Okay, so welcome to this next video in the playlist on cis loop ligand gated ion channels. In this video, what we're going to talk about is the nicotinic acetylcholine receptor, often abbreviated to the NACHR, like so. Little n for nicotinic, ACH for acetylcholine, R for receptor, so the nicotinic acetylcholine receptor. And the nicotinic acetylcholine receptor is uh, our prime, our sort of archetypal example of uh, a cis loop ligand gated ion channel. Okay, so let's uh, firstly have a basic reminder of uh, the structure of a cis loop ligand gated ion channel, and then we'll talk about specifically the protein subunits that make up nicotinic, ac uh, nicotinic acetylcholine receptors, and then we'll look at the different. Uh, well, the major different types of nicotinic acetylcholine receptor. So, uh, the fetal and adult uh, nicotinic acetylcholine receptor that's at the skeletal muscles, uh, the nicotinic acetylcholine receptor that's at the uh, autonomic ganglia, and finally, uh, the uh, two main uh, isoforms that are within the um, central nervous system. And we'll look at different pharmacological agents which can act on them. Okay, right. So we'll start with the basic structure of the nicotinic acetylcholine receptor, or rather just the basic structure of a cis-loop ligand-gated ion channel. So if we draw a cis-loop ligand-gated ion channel here, we know that the cis-loop ligand-gated ion channel is a pentamer, okay, so it's made up of five subunits. So let me draw these. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so we have a pentamer of protein subunits. So this is, uh, let me just draw the uh, phospholipid by there to show where it is. Okay, so here is our pentamer of uh, subunits that is making our uh, cis-loop ligand-gated ion channel, which we are thinking of now as the nicotinic acetylcholine receptor. So this entire thing, this is a nicotinic and I'll write its full name out, I suppose I should do this at least once, nicotinic acetylcholine receptor, so that I can get away with just making the abbreviation from henceforth. Okay, so nicotinic acetylcholine receptor. Okay, right. Now, as you can see, it's made up of five separate proteins, okay? And let's just remind ourselves of the membrane-spanning topology of one of these protein subunits that makes up uh, the pentamer that is the nicotinic acetylcholine receptor. Okay, right. So the membrane-spanning topology of one of these subunits is as follows. What you have is, let's say, this is the amino terminus here. So this is the amino terminus of the protein. Then you have a cis loop here held together by disulfide bonds. And then you have your first membrane spanning um, domain uh, known as M1. So this first membrane spanning domain is called the M1 domain. Then the protein straddles the membrane again. This is known as the M2 domain. Okay, so let me label these up. M2. Then it straddles the membrane again known as N M3. And then finally, once again, and that's called M4. Okay, so here is M4 here. Okay, and then the protein has its C terminus over here. So this is the structure of a single subunit of the nicotinic acetylcholine receptor. Okay, so now uh, let's talk about the different subunits that we can use to build this pentamer that is the nicotinic acetylcholine receptor. Okay, so basically, in the human genome, there are 17 genes encoding for subunits that you can use to build uh, nicotinic acetylcholine receptors. So there are 17 uh, types of nicotinic acetylcholine receptor subunit, of nicotinic acetylcholine receptor subunit. Okay? So this looks as though it's going to give us a huge scope for making different nicotinic acetylcholine receptors, and indeed it does. Now, we name these subunits like so. We split them into families. So there is the family of alpha subunits, okay? 
and in this family there are 10 members. So of the 17, 10 of them are all called alpha subunits, and they are imaginatively called alpha 1, and then it will go on, alpha 2, alpha 3, alpha 4, all the way down to the alpha 10 subunit. So here are 10 of these subunits that make up nicotinic acetylcholine receptors, and they are the alpha subunits. Then, the next family is the beta subunits, okay? So the beta subunits contains four different genes. So there is the beta 1 subunit, the beta 2 subunit, the beta 3 subunit, and the beta 4 subunit, okay? And then finally, there is the gamma subunit, and there's only one of those, okay? Then there is the delta and the epsilon. So that makes up all 17 of these genes. 10 of them are these alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha 3, all the way through to alpha 10. Then we have beta 1, beta 2, beta 3, beta 4. That takes us up to 14. Gamma is 15, delta is 16, epsilon is 17. These are the 17 genes which make nicotinic acetylcholine receptor subunits. Okay, right. So now what we want to see is how can we assemble these uh, subunits into nicotinic acetylcholine receptors. And you will notice that there is a huge scope of different ways to do this. So this is a nightmare. This is a potentially incredibly complex area. However, we are not going to go through every single possible uh, nicotinic acetylcholine receptor you can build, because unfortunately it is not simple. It's not just the case that you can put five alpha-1 subunits together, or five alpha-2 subunits. It's not just the case that the only way that you can build nicotinic acetylcholine receptors is by using the same subunit five times. You can mix and match, basically. Okay? So there is a huge scope for making very, uh, a huge number of different uh, nicotinic acetylcholine receptors. So, we are going to look at a few of them, uh, the most important ones. Okay, so we're going to start off with the nicotinic acetylcholine receptor, which is on skeletal muscle cells. Okay, so uh, if I draw a neuron here, innovating a skeletal muscle cell here, so this is a myofiber, a skeletal myofiber, then basically when you want to contract a muscle, what you do is you activate the neurons which innervate your skeletal muscle cells, the so-called alpha motor neurons. Or, in fact, often they just call them motor neurons. Okay? So, you activate the alpha motor neurons, and uh, these release acetylcholine onto the uh, skeletal muscle cells. So this is acetylcholine that is being released, ACH for short. And the acetylcholine is going to cause the contraction of that skeletal uh, myofiber. How? It's going to act on uh, uh, nicotinic acetylcholine receptors. So we want to look at what's the um, subunit composition of these nicotinic acetylcholine receptors that are within the uh, membrane of the skeletal muscle cell, which is often called the sarcolemma. Okay, and it has a very specific uh, nicotinic acetylcholine receptor protein subunit. So let's see this. Right, so what we're looking at then, what I'm going to draw is I'm going to draw the top view of our receptor. So I'm going to draw as though we're looking down on here, basically. Okay, so that's what I'm going to draw now. So here, from above, we have this sort of cartwheel structure here. And here are the five subunits here, making up the nicotinic acetylcholine receptor. Right, now if we are talking about the nicotinic acetylcholine receptor that is in adult neuromuscular junction. So we are talking about the adult neuromuscular junction acetylcholine receptor, and NMJ, like so, with dots like that, means neuromuscular junction. Okay, uh, and I'll just put nicotinic acetylcholine receptor to complete that sentence. Then basically, uh, the subunit composition is as follows. You have two alpha-1 subunits, spaced apart like so. Okay, in between, you then have an epsilon subunit here, 
Over here, you then have a delta subunit. And finally, over here, you have the beta 1 subunit. So, the subunits you've used, you've used the delta and the epsilon, you've used beta 1 up here, and you've used alpha 1 also. So, this receptor is called the alpha 1, and then you put 2 there, then you put beta 1 next, and then next, delta, and then finally on the end, epsilon. And it's a hetero pentamer because it's got different um, different subunits, different nicotinic acetylcholine receptor subunits um, being used in different slots. So it's certainly not a homopentamer. A homopentamer would be if you used the same subunit five times. And we're going to see an example of a homopentamer. But this is a heteropentamer. Okay, and it's a heteropentamer where we've used four different types of nicotinic acetylcholine uh, receptor subunit. Okay, so we'll continue this discussion in the next video.